Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, October 12th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Mauna Loa in the Big Island of Hawaii is prepping to erupt. Have you heard? We'll get to it. 477 stranded whales die on a remote New Zealand island due to the magnetic excursion, but the big story... The persimmon seeds are showing spoons, and that means a very heavy winter. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now back to some of the witchcraft. <laughs> persimmon seeds. There are three types of images you can see in persimmon seeds, and, well, very old-timey folklore tells us that if you see spoons in your persimmon seeds, the snow will be heavy. If you see a knife... And a spoon, you'll have heavy snow and fast cutting winds. And if you see a fork, it's global warming. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! <laughs> so what we're looking at here is a very spoonified, with a knife, persimmon forecast. And this is coming from one of our viewers. Thank you to whoever sent me that. Mount Charleston near Las Vegas sees its first snow in, on October 10th. Hello, cold air to help usher in the first measurable snowfall of the season in the upper Midwest. Most accumulations are expected to remain. Love you too, babe. Most accumulations are expected to remain below three inches from North Dakota to the upper peninsula of Michigan. Let's take a look at the GFS model, shall we? And it's looking like some heavy snow. So there is that system moving through here Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's going to be bringing some snow Sunday, Monday. Take a look at it moving east here. Early in the week, we're going to have a northeast debacle. We haven't seen snow like this early in October for a while, and it's going to look like a pile. Shortly after the northeast debacle, we have a system moving down through British Columbia into the Pacific Northwest and into the Rockies that's going to be epic, bringing tons of snow to many regions. So the snow season, oh, look at this. Sierra's picking, in, picking up on the action here. Octo, uh, October 24th, take a look at that. Boom. We could see some early snow in the Sierras by Wednesday, October 19th and 18th. That's just a few days out. So heads up, the snow is coming to all regions. Cold front bringing thunderstorms to the Mississippi Valley, fire weather to the plains, thunderstorms capable of damaging winds and hail are expected this afternoon through the early evening across parts of mid-Mississippi Valley ahead and along of a broad cold front that is moving across the continental U.S. Now behind the front, the combination of low relative humidity and gusty to high winds may result in rapid wildfire spread. And you see those uh, red flag warnings all the way up through the upper Midwest. Now for the morning, thunderstorms and rain in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic with fire, with that fire weather threat uh, continuing to expand all the way down here. So take a look at that. We have frost and freeze warnings up for Eastern Colorado, as well as some, what is this purple? Hard freeze warnings for portions of Colorado as well. So heads up, it's going to be a chilly one. Strong to severe thunderstorms tomorrow with heavy and excessive rainfall are expected across the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. We've got some flood warnings up in Maine. It's insane. On Thursday with the arrival of a strong cold front. Meanwhile, critical fire weather conditions likely across the northern and central plains on Thursday due to very dry conditions and gusty winds. The Mississippi, in fact, is so low, ho-ho, that they're having trouble moving shipments with barges. But that's pretty normal for uh, the beginning of fall. That's the lowest water season in the Mississippi. As we check out the tropical storm forecast, what we have here is a tropical storm named Carl sitting at around 60 miles per hour, just 15 miles per hour away from Cat 1. Heavy rainfall could produce instances of flash flooding with mudslides in areas and higher terrain in portions across Veracruz and Tabasco in Mexico. As you can see, the Kona forecast is making it drop directly south and smash into that portion of Mexico. So no threat to the U.S. Where's the rain? Drought continues as B.C. crushes temperature records. Now apparently the province, uh, which is a British Columbia news outlet, is completely um, 
bought into the propaganda, which is legal starting in 2012 in North America due to the Smith Modernization Act. But it's probably just legal in Canada because Canada is full of it. Now, October is set to be the warmest on record, according to weather network meteorologist in Metro Vancouver. Yeah, that's because they moved the thermometers to a tarmac, you. <laughs> but the reality is, is where is the rain? Look at this. This is the GFS model for British Columbia. It's, you're about to get pummeled with not only rain, but heavy snow. The entire province is not in a drought. It's in a deluge warning. So you can just see how the mainstream has doesn't even look at the science or the models. They don't care. What is there to really care about? But what I want to bring to your attention here is the global map here of all of North America and point to you what's happening with the breakdown of the magnetosphere in the magnetic excursion uh, that we're currently experiencing. The meridional flow is in control. And what that means is that these Arctic plumes can move all the way down from the North Pole here. Look at this all the way down almost to the Gulf of Mexico. And now we're looking at this in, uh, look at that. Wow, look at that. So you have warm air 55 all the way up into the Arctic Circle, and you have freezing temperatures all the way down to Tennessee. That's going to be Tuesday, October 18th. That is a severe meridional flow. Again here, look at this, freezing way below Washington, D.C., all the way down to Georgia, while it is above freezing up in the Arctic Circle. So you could pick out the wavy jet pattern there. Look at that drop down. That is a meridional flow, not a zonal flow. And it is insane and only going to get worse. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We've got Hawaii on alert, about to erupt. Mauna Loa, hello. And our most recent quake here in Papua New Guinea at 4.9. What's this rumbler? Oh, disgusting. It's a frat quake. And the biggest West Coast quake of the day in Grapevine, California, 3.7, kicking off there. Look at some activity here in Camp Chalk to 5.0 near Kri the Kurils in Ruskaya. Yeah, that's Russia. Is Mauna Loa getting ready to erupt? Well, yeah. It's not a matter of if, but when. Yes, Mauna Loa will erupt again. According to Kate Mulliken, a geologist with the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, as they told Big Island now. But Diamond is also a geologist, and he also concurs. Now, it's been quite some time since, nearly 40 years since the volcano's last eruption. The longest Mauna Loa has gone without one, but heightened activity under the snoozing giant's caldera during the past month begs the question, is it going to erupt? Yes, we've got significant uplift here. Let's look at this. Since September 20th, something began and rapidly increased all the way through the beginning of um, October, and now we've leveled off, and it seems to be ramping up again. So we need another ramping up and some more activity at the surface. This magma is now in place about a mile deep, and we need that to get up a little closer to the surface be before we have an eruption. That's going to be some more uplift here. This is the GPS uh, measurements, and you can see here the tilt micro radians moving up. And here are earthquakes per day. They have dropped off a little, so the earthquakes per day will increase again towards the eruption. There'll be some more tilt emitter activity. We will have warning several days before the next eruption of Mauna Loa, which is going to happen soon, and we'll cover the boom. Now, another boom happening. Grimm's Volton volcano, which we predicted to be a potential eruptor, as well as Ostia, and we'll get to that, also seems to be rumbling. Now, Grimm's Volton volcano is now experiencing a joculips which is a glacial flood, and alert uh, status has been raised to yellow because when pressure is released off of the caldera at Grimsvotten, typically the volcano goes boom, and you can see here a drop down of over four meters now happening, well, in just the last four or five days. As a glacial flood, a joculip from the Grimsvotten volcano within the Vatna Yokel Glacier has begun. Now, this gigantic glacier is the Vatna Yokel, and to the south here is where all those glacial uh, joculip floods occur. And they run right out to the ocean, and some of the biggest floods ever recorded on Earth have come from this particular glacier. 
Now here we are over at the seismicity at the Botna Yokel. You can see there is an uptick here in the last 12 or certain hours. Down here mostly to the south. And you can see all of these outwash channels here on the coastal plain. And those are from all the Jacquelips coming from Grimm's Voten or other volcanoes. We've got Bartabunga, Grimm's Voten, Thordarnia, Eschafjol, and Orofa Yokel. And all of these can do subsurface melting. And look at this is the main channel set, the Skitnjulub. And this is where most of the Jokulip comes out from Grimsvold and Bartabunga, etc. As the glacier melts from beneath, the top doesn't melt. But what happens is, in Grimsvold's case, the caldera ice drops down. And those are the tiltometer meetings or the GPS where we were looking at earlier, dropping down four meters as the water rushes out to the ocean in the Gigyushkivil River. I, I'm definitely not pronouncing that correctly, so bear with me. Now, this has been a jam-packed podcast so far, only 10 minutes and 59 seconds in, and tons of information. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe now and hit that thumbs up if you like what we're talking about. Let's go over what Grimm's Voten Volcano is and where it's at. Grimm's Voten is a volcano right there, located under the Vatna Yokel Glacier in southeastern quadrant of Iceland. Its most recent eruption in 2011 included explosions with multiple 15 to 20 kilometer altitude ash plumes that produced ash falls tens of kilometers away and shut down air traffic. I'm sure many of you remember that. Now, period joculips or glacial outburst, outburst floods from Vatna Yokel have been recognized for centuries and have occurred regularly since the end of the last ice age when a lake fed by glacier meltwater breaches its dam and then drains ooh, excuse me, rapidly to the south here. And you can see this whole delta-like region was from all of those glacial floods. So if you want to know more, all the links below are about everything we talk about. You just got to go down and find it. Now, 477 stranded whales die on a remote New Zealand island. This is after hundreds die in Tasmania just a few weeks or months ago. It all has to, these tragic endings don't need to happen, but they do. They're happening because the South Pole is rapidly moving away from the rotational pole or the southern rotational pole. It's way up here to the north. And the South Magnetic Pole is now off of the continent of Antarctica and rapidly moving towards Indonesia. In just the last 20 or so years, it's moved quite a considerable distance laterally here in longitude, which is going to destroy the magnetic implanted honing mechanism of these pilot whales. And it certainly did. 477 is a tragic number. And none of the stranded whales could be refloated and all either died naturally or were euthanized in the last 24 hours. Absolutely heartbreaking. But it's a sign of the times of things to come. More strandings, more beachings will be increasing as the magnetic fields rapidly move from their current position. Now, the DART mission successfully changed the motion of an asteroid. The Double Asteroid Redetection Test, or DART, successfully changed the trajectory of an asteroid dimorphous. When the NASA spacecraft intentionally slammed into the rock on September 26th, the data coming out is spectacular, and let's take a look and watch a video. Seven million miles away, photographic proof that NASA's DART mission... Dirt and rock. The moment the refrigerator-sized space... Seven million miles away, photographic proof that NASA's DART mission worked. That exploding cloud of dirt and rock. The moment the refrigerator-sized spacecraft slammed into an asteroid named Dimorphos, orbiting an even bigger asteroid. The impact gave Dimorphos a big shove, dramatically shortening its orbit even more than NASA had hoped. It was expected to be a huge success if it it only slowed the orbit by about 10 minutes, but it actually slowed it by 32 minutes. Traveling at 14,000 miles per hour, Dart's nose camera caught the final seconds before impact.
impact. While the asteroid poses no risk to us, NASA is hoping it can one day use the same technique to divert a massive meteor on a collision course with Earth, a so-called planet killer like the one that killed off the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Warning time is really key here in order to enable this sort of asteroid deflection to potentially be used in the future. NASA says it's not tracking any asteroid known to pose an imminent threat to Earth, but there may be others it doesn't see. Ideally, scientists would have decades of warning to use a similar deflection technique and save humanity. All of us have a responsibility to protect our home planet. After all, it's the only one we have. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Wow, that guy seemed a little old. I hope he makes it. So DART was successful. The video footage is amazing. And the results are compelling that we can actually potentially protect from a cosmic catastrophe in the form of a large asteroid headed our way. Now strange ripples have been detected at the edge of the solar system. Is it the galactic cosmic wave coming to kill us all? Probably not. The bubbles of space encasing the solar system might be wrinkled, at least sometimes. Now, data from spacecraft orbiting Earth have revealed ripple structures in the termination shock and heliopause of our solar system. Shifting regions of space that mark one of the boundaries between the space inside the solar system and what's outside in interstellar space. And here are some of the three-dimensional visualizations of the termination shock. Pretty fantastic. No one has any idea what this actually means. But many people will speculate and fearmonger, I'm sure. Now, for no speculation and no fearmongering, we did a video on Magnetic Reversal News last night about a new nuclear threat called hemp, high altitude electromagnetic pulse. It was tested in the 60s and it was successful. And we do a complete expose on the topic. So please check that out. It will be linked after this video in the boxes that pop up. Um, but we also want to include tonight, Electromagnetic Pulse Shielding Mitigations came out August 2022. Best practices for protecting from EMP. This could be from the sun, a Carrington-like event, or even, uh, well, a hostile country that may want to attack us. It's just 16 pages jam-packed with important information on how to protect critical infrastructure. In a closing note here, a jury awards nearly $1 billion to Sandy Hook families in the Alex Jones case. This is $50 million in the first uh, run of the case down in, uh, where was that? Where was that? In Texas, $50 million was in Texas. And then now today, a jury in Connecticut decided the right-wing conspiracy theorist should pay eight families $965 million. Absolutely insane. Now, the reckoning for Jones comes at a pivotal moment in American society where lies and conspiracy theories have flourished in recent years. The only problem is that almost 95% of all of the supposed conspiracy theories are facts and the truth. And that also goes for 95% of what Alex Jones has predicted for over a decade. It's all been true. This, this one, the Sandy Hook, that was a big faux pas, and, and I knew it was fake. And I did not report on it. I didn't get involved. But everything else he has said has come true. The World Economic Forum, the UN, the globalist agenda, Agenda 2030, vaccine passports, fake vaccines that do not protect against transmission that the CDC just admitted. These are all true. They're not conspiracy theories. Yet the mainstream propaganda machine will push on. And that's a $1 billion hit to free speech. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe. Share the video. Be a hero. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Thanks for watching. Be safe. And that's a boom.